What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for The Shy. This is season 4, episode 7, and the episode was titled Black Messiah. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This episode was all over the place for me. I was hella confused about some parts of this episode, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about them. Um so yeah, before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on the channel, and you're not already subscribed to the channel then i need you guys to um stop taking me out on dates and hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell button and like the video and share the video <clears throat> now with that all being said let's go ahead and get into this episode review of the shy all right you guys i'm not quite sure where i want to start up at um and we'll start up with this interesting stuff with duda trig and imani all right, you guys, so we all know Duda got shot, right? So Duda is out of the hospital at this point. Duda has pulled up on Trig. Trig is trying to figure out why Duda has pulled up. Like, everybody know you okay. So, um, I was kind of confused. When in the hell, when the hell did Trig and Duda become cool with each other? Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harp on that. So Trig asked, um, Duda, what is his plans, you know? He says, well, his plan is to get his, he wants to get his, his defund plan passed so that way he can create more jobs. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to go into that either. So then we see them at the trap house, right? And they talking to, um, what's his name? What is that dude's name? Uh, Nuck, right? And they telling Nuck that he got to get out. I'm like, really? Really? So he just going, Okay. I mean, I guess because Duda is the mayor and Duda is, you know, the big drug dealer. I guess I, I, I'm, I'm confused because Nuck didn't give any kind of pushback, any kind of anything. And I was just like, wow. Y'all running him out of his trap house and he ain't saying nothing about it. <clears throat> so then Duda tells Trig to do his shit. I'm like, what does that mean? <clears throat> All right, so next we see Trig and Imani, right? They're in the trap house, and they go on door to door. So each door has a lock on it. So they're unlocking every door, and you see the women, they're looking at them, right? Well, actually, before that, Trig told Imani, like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I don't know how to talk to these women. And she was just like, you know, just treat them like they're, you know, which they are regular, everyday women. Just talk to them normally. <clears throat> So then, um, we later see Imani, and she was picking out some clothes for the girls. I guess clothes that she can't fit, or clothes that she's just not gonna wear. But I'm like, really? You got enough clothes to? Because from I mean, it was girl, it was multiple rooms, and I'm like, as small as Imani is, some of those girls were not small. So some of those girls are not gonna be able to fit them clothes that Imani is bringing to them. I mean, yeah, a lot of holes in this, right? A lot of holes. Um, so then Trick tells Imani that, you know, well, I got to go back over here to Cherry and um, Jamal's crib. And she's like, please don't come back with another black guy. So then Jake comes in and he's asking for some money. He says, you can get a job and have some money. He's like, what you need the money for? He says, um, I want to take Gemma to the Spring Fling, right? So he's like, how much is He says, 45 a piece. I'm like, 45 a piece for a ticket to a Spring Fling? Absolutely not. I wouldn't be, you wouldn't be going. Not on my dime. Now, here's here's where I'm going to get into the stuff that literally was just completely unrealistic to me. It's this thing, it's, you know, the thing that um, Tracy and um, Trigger are doing, the, um, the, um, the, um, the community outreach thing, right? You know, I wish I had a body like some of these people that'd be running around with those shirts on. I'm envious of that. I mean, his, I'm looking at the guy, he's running, but he looked like he's sunburned too. I mean, arms, arms are just ripped. Um, what was he at? So yeah, this community outreach stuff. Some of it seemed realistic. Other parts of it did not seem, actually none of it seemed realistic. Let's keep it real with you. Why am I lying? None of it seemed realistic, right? Like you saw an old woman, she dropped her bread. One of the corner niggas, one of the street boys came up, picked up her bread and took it, you know. You could see that and you, you could see that. I'm not going to say that that's not realistic. You could see that. But then when I saw them putting the free food out and the free clothes and all of that stuff, 
I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? I'm like, this is unrealistic. You putting free food out in a black neighborhood, you know niggas ain't gonna trust that 100%. They were like, it's a catch. It's gonna be. It's got to be a catch with that. And the same thing with the free clothes. I'm like, okay, whatever. I couldn't with that scene. And then, like you saw that one dude Jack trying to do a carjacking, and the guy that you know the dude that be with Trig, he stopped him. I'm like, wait a minute. This is unrealistic. I couldn't get. I could not get with that scene whatsoever. It was just the most unrealistic stuff I've ever saw in my life. It was so unrealistic, completely unrealistic. So then we see Trig, right? Trig pulls up on Cherry, right? He asked Cherry, like, you know, how are things between you and um, what's her boyfriend's name? I just said his name a minute ago, Jamal. She says, "Well, I'm good. You know, I'm getting ready to. I'm. I was just about. I'm getting ready to work. Now I can't speak about him, right? That's what she said. Um. So then over at the trap house, the ladies, the ladies are upset with um, you know, Trig and Imani, because they, yes, you guys are taking them out of the out of um, you know, trap. You know, being in the trap house, but now they're going to be faced with situations of probably being homeless." going to homeless shelters, doing all of this stuff. I was like, okay, I, I, I guess you take them from one bad situation, but you didn't figure out what to do with them once you got them out of that situation. I got that part. So then Imani tells Trig that she wants to turn the trap house into a place of a sanctuary for the lady, so to speak. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I guess, but we're turning a trap house into a sanctuary. I mean, I, again, like I said, I guess, whatever. So then Imani went into Trinity's room and Imani got upset because, you know, Trinity, unfortunately, she's not able to, you know, see what Trig and Imani were able to do. For so they're going to name the place Trinity's Trinity something. I don't know what the hell they're naming it. So then Trig, once again, he pulls up on Cherry and Jamal, right? <clears throat> now, at this point, Jamal and um, Cherry's brother, Lance, are having a fight with each other. Um, Trig tells Jamal to leave. Jamal's like, the the hell, man? Like, I called you guys because she hit me in the face. So then we see Jamal. He's outside. He's up, still upset about the fact that Trig asked him to leave when he's the one that called them, right? So Lance comes downstairs. Lance has a gun, and he's pointing it at Jamal. Jamal's like, go ahead. Kill me, nigga. So Trig manages to wrestle the gun away from Jamal, from um Lance. Jamal picks up the gun. Jamal shoots Lance and kills Lance. I was like, well, this just went from bad to worse, right? <clears throat> and this is another thing that's unrealistic, right? This is unrealistic. I think it's more, I think all of this is unrealistic because of the fact that we have people who are not trained. Kind of what we complain, kind of what we talk about with law enforcement. Although the law enforcement are not trained, you know, to handle certain situations like, you know, mental health situations. You just took. Okay. Don't think too deep into it. Don't like stop. Okay. <laughs> so then we see Trig talking to Duda, right? And he's telling Duda that he's going to, you know, he and, him, he and Imani are going to give the women a trap house. And they're turning it into a sanctuary. But at this point, now Trig is starting to have second thoughts about this whole, um, this whole him, Tracy, doing this community outreach thing since Lance has died. Because he feels like the people are not going to trust them. The people shouldn't trust y'all from the jump. Like, y'all are not trained to do anything. Like, Trig, when you first met Lance and Cherry, you got popped in the face and got a black eye. Who would trust you? I'm moving on, you guys. All right, you guys. So next up, let's talk about Jada um, and Emmett and Tiffany. This is another scene that was unrealistic to me. Um, so we see Jada. So Jada, at this point, she's getting ready. To, she's shaving her head bald, right? We all know she's going through chemo, so she's shaving her head bald before her hair starts to fall out. <clears throat> so then we see Emmett and Tiffany, right? So Emmett and Tiffany, they are over at Nina and Dre's crib to drop off some stuff to t um, to um. To Keisha because you guys remember in the last episode Keisha said that she wanted her baby back right so Keisha now has her baby we'll talk about that in just a little bit so 
um, Emmett is telling Tiffany that he wants to take her out, <clears throat> out on a date for the night. And she's like, oh, no, Emmett, I can't do that. Like, I got I to gotta work. He's like, is that cold for you want to fuck Dante? She says, nigga, if I want to say, if I want to fuck Dante, I would tell you I want to fuck Dante. And she's like, no, it's a, it's a party that I'm, I'm going to. She says, me and Dom were supposed to do it, but Dom is not going to be not going at this point. So he says, what kind of party is it? She says, it's a sex party. He says, oh. She's like, but you know, you can come if you want to. He says, nah, I don't necessarily know if I want to go to a sex party. So they drop off the stuff to Keisha, right? And Emmett is talking to Nina. And Emmett notices that Nina is drinking. You know, she's drinking. And he's like, you look like somebody that got some regrets. He says, come, you know, take it from me. I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, like, really? Nina is going to take it. I mean, I'm like, I hope and pray Nina does not take advice from a kid. Uh, oh, God. Okay, let's move on. So he tells her to come clean, basically, right? So then we see Tiffany. She goes, so she goes over. I want to say Sunny's, but it's not Sunny's. It's Smokey's. She goes to Smokey's, and Emmett's still there. And, you know, he tells her, you know what, I want to come out of my comfort zone, so I'll go with you to the sex party, right? Now, here's where we got, um, here's where it got to be unrealistic for me because I've been to a sex party before. And, this, you know, despite what people might think about sex parties, they, they're, they're very clean, they're fun, and they're safe. Like, they're safe. <clears throat> because at a sex party, they have they have a, a station. The ones that I, the one that I've been to, they have a station where you can get condoms. They have a station where you, if you want to get something to drink, you can get something to drink. If you want to get, you know, whatever you want. If you want to smoke, you smoke. They even have a section where if you want to watch porn, you can go and watch porn. And most times, because I most times when you go, I mean, they're in. The, it, it's pretty dark most times when you go to a sex party. Not always, but it's there. They do have some some the ones that I've been the one that I've been to. It's a, you have a room that's dark. You can still see people, but it's dark, and you have a room that's dark. Then you can have your room where there's you know, like I said, porn. And now what the girl did say: the rules are the rules. Those are the rules. If a person tells you no, no. <clears throat> now I've never been to one where people have an issue with you watching them. I mean, I've, I, I've never been in a position like that where people don't want you to watch. I mean, shit, if it's a sex party. Now, people might not want you to touch them. That's one thing. But I've never saw people say, oh, you can't watch us. And like she said, it's consenting. So if, you know, if you see a person, you like them, you go up to them. If they're not interested in you, you move on to the next person. But I, I mean, that that just looked like a um, honestly, to be quite honest with you guys, what that looked like to me, it looked like Candy's um, dungeon party. That's really what that looked like. It looked like Welcome to the Dungeon. Um, so then there was this guy that was talking to Tiffany, right? And you know, Tiffany kind of turned him down, in a, so to speak. So then the girl that's hosting this play, hosting the sex party, Tiffany talks to her. She's like, "Are you single?" Well, she's actually married. She's been married for five years, and she says, "What's the secret to it?" She says, "When you and your partner play, the, if you if you um, what did she say? Because a couple that plays together stays together, which I believe that that's true. If you guys have a, if you guys have that open and honest communication about what you guys do, it can work out." <clears throat> now, I was looking at the guy that came back. Her husband, I think, her husband was the guy that was talking to Tiffany. Honestly, when it comes to Tiffany and Emmett, I think they're going to, I feel like at some point they're going to swing. That's what, that's the vibe that they're giving me is that they're going to swing at some point. I just get that vibe from Tiffany and Emmett that they're going to swing. But let's move on, you guys. My voice is cracking. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about the kids, right? So, Papa. You guys remember in the last episode, Papa broke up, Papa and Maisha broke up because Maisha needed space after that interview that she did, right? So Papa misses his girl, so he, we see him cutting out pictures of Maisha. I didn't understand what the reasoning for that was, so Jake comes over there. Jake is the most disrespectful little kid I've ever saw in my life. So, you know, Papa's like, you know, I, I, I got to come um, right with my apology, you know. <clears throat> so then, <coughs> then Jake says, you would never see me do that for no bitch. I'm like, why does this boy continuously call women bitches? 
And the fact that Gemma wanted to be with him says a lot about her. So, so um, Pop was like, well, how would you feel if I text that to Gemma? He was like, okay, whatever. So then Papa tells him, like, what you and Gemma did to Kevin, you guys did not have to do that, which I 1,000% agree. They did not have to do that to Kevin. He says, it ain't my fault that Kevin's corny. What does Kevin being corny have to do with anything? Like, you got with his girl, and that's supposed to be your boy. Like, make that shit make sense. I hope you guys can see me, because I can't see myself in this camera. I literally can't see myself. <clears throat> so, um... Um, Papa told uh, um, Jake that it's messy That he wants to take um, Gemma to the spring fling Which I agree with him on that one And then we see poor Kevin Poor Kevin Kevin is drinking Kevin is depressed um, So we see him getting drunk So he went to go get a video game right? And you know He, he saw the little girl uh, Lene That he that bumped, Actually she bumped into him In the last episode And was rude so the game was sold out, right? So Kevin saw that she had the game, and he was like, "How did you get it?" She's like, "Oh, I'm friends with the manager or whoever." So they they held me a copy. He's like, "Do you think they could, you could um, work that out for me?" She's like, "It don't work that way." He's like, "Well, can I play the game with you?" She says, "Come on, cool." So then we see Jake again. Jake is a typical nigga. Like, um, so Papa's talking to him about this whole spring fling and how to ask Jim to the spring fling. He's like, what's her love language? What's this? What's that? Jake doesn't know anything. Like I said, Jake is Jake is all about himself. So then we see Kevin. So Kevin is now on the west side of Chicago with Lene. And they go to what I think might have been a game room. And they start playing a game. And look, Kevin beats Lene. And once they leave, Lene was like, you know what? I can't believe that you beat me. So um, they both say that they've been through some things. And Lene tells him about... You know, her dad being a drunk and her brother being, you know, um, crazy or or irrational, whichever one she said. I forgot which one she said. And she had to pick and she just chose her brother, I guess. So Jamal is her brother? Okay, whatever. I'm not even going to go there. So then we see Jake and Gemma. They smoke on a blunt and making out with each other, right? Don't care about them. Kevin and Lene. So Kevin was actually trying to get to know Lene. He was asking her about herself. He told her he wants to be a cook. She was like, you know, you're going to be a terrible cook. And he asked her out. He says, you don't want to go to the movies. You know, would you like to go to the movies with me sometimes? She says, are you asking me out on a date? He says, yes. She says, you know, I don't look, I don't see you in that way. But we can continue to still play the video games with each other. I'm like, oh, poor Kevin. Poor Kev. Then we see Jake asking um, Gemma to the um, spring fling. I want to throw up looking at that scene with Jake and Gemma. Really did. Let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Now, let's talk about Keisha and Nina more specifically, right? So, you guys remember, Keisha, in the last episode, she told Nina she wanted her baby back. So, in this episode, she has her baby back. She had, much like um, with um, whatever her name was, Octavia. She, Octavia had named the baby, and neither has Keisha. God, I hope you guys can see me. Like, I can... I, I really hope you guys see me. All right. Um. So, yeah. So, Nina asked Keisha, is she sure that she wants to keep this baby? And Keisha says, yes. And she says, you know, Octavia said that she understood my decision. And Nina says, well, of course she said that. Well, like, what do you think she's going to say? Like, no, I don't, I don't agree with your decision. So basically what it is for Nina is Nina wants Keisha to make the best decision for not only herself, but the baby. And I got where she was coming from. Because Keisha, do you want to continue to work at this thrift store for the rest of your life? Like, think about yourself. And then, you know, Nina asked her the question, like, what do you think when the baby starts to look like his father? Damn, that would be a hard one. That really would be a hard one. Though. I, I, I have to agree with her on that one. So then we see Nina and Dre, they're talking, right? And they were getting ready for the baby shower. Now, Nina doesn't necessarily want to specifically call it a baby shower, but that's exactly what it is. It's a baby shower. So um, at this point, you know, Dre was trying to touch Nina, and Nina kept having flashbacks to when she was with the brat. And Dre thinks that it's Nina worrying about um, Jada, but I'm like, ooh, wrong page, wrong book, wrong library. Now, Nina, I had an issue with Nina in this episode with Kevin, right? 
Now, we all know Kevin is going through some stuff with, you know, the fact that Jake and Gemma are dating each other. Now, why in the hell did Nina have to say? Nina rubbed it in. Like, are you still you still upset about your, um, your, your, your girlfriend leaving for your friend? I'm like, well, damn, Nina. Tell us how you really feel. Now, I will agree with them, though, with Kevin. Kevin needs to focus on school. I will give them that. But damn, did you have to be that, 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 that cutthroat? Jesus Christ. So then we see Keisha. So Keisha was talking to Tiffany, right? And Keisha asked, Keisha, Keisha asked Tiffany if she thinks that it's crazy that she took her baby back. And, you know, she says, no. Like, she says, do what's best for you and do what's best for your child. Keisha's just worried about people judging her. And I'm like, um, I don't know why people would judge you because what you're, what you're technically, what you're doing is actually commendable. The fact that you got raped and you got pregnant by your rapist and you decided to keep you number one you decided to go through with your entire pregnancy yes you gave your baby up for adoption but then you had remorse and you took your baby back that's commendable so i don't know why anybody would judge you right so then we see jada and nina talking and nina um jada thanks nina for sharing dre with her with this whole chemotherapy you know thing dre and um you know jada was like you know if it was me I would probably think that something was going on between me and um and Dre. And Nina made a face and she's like, you didn't really think that something was going on between us, did you? She says, well, what, is, what was I supposed to think? I mean, she was ignoring my phone calls. She was sending me the voicemail and all that stuff. And then she tells her, you know, I'm, I think I made a mistake. I'm like, nah, baby, I don't think you made a mistake. You made a whole entire mistake. You cheated on your wife. And that's what she told her. So then we see the ladies. Um, so it's it's Dr Jada, it's Nina, it's Dre, and it's um, it's all the ladies. It's Dre, Jada, Nina, Tiff, and Keisha. They're talking, right? And you know they're talking to Keisha about what to name the baby. And you know, um, Tiffany asked um, Jada where did she get the name Emmett. Emmett came. I guess she was um, honoring Emmett Till. So. Nina was telling Keisha, when it comes down to naming a baby, all she wants is for her to give the baby a good name so that way he has a good future. So that way when he goes and applies for jobs, he can get a job. And people don't, you know, automatically, like, uh-oh, that's a black baby. Throw that in the, um, discard that one. Um, She actually wanted her to name him Joe. I'm like, ooh, please don't do that. So then we see Nina and Dre talking, right? Once again, Dre tries to touch Nina. When she tried to touch Nina... Nina once again had another flashback about her being with the brat. So, you know, um, Dre asked her what's wrong, and Nina says, We need to talk, right? So they talk, and Nina tells her she was with someone else, and Dre, I mean, she let it all out. Like, she let it all out. Um, so then to wrap the episode up, we see Keisha. Keisha, God dang it, I hope y'all can see me. It's like the sun. I don't know what is going on with the sun. Oh, God. We're going to have to work with this. So Keisha was having flashbacks about the man who kidnapped her, raped her, got her pregnant, right? And then, um, we, you know, remember, they were telling her about... Remember when um, I was just telling you, Jada was talking about how she came up with Emmett's name. So now Keisha's come up with a name for the baby, and she's named the baby Ronnie. And that's actually the end of the episode, you guys. So let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Please like this video. Leave your comments in the comments section below, you guys. Um, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask or not. Just stay safe and stay blessed, you guys. And I'll catch you guys later for um, the other shows that we're going to review. Until then, bye.